Today we're going to talk about um, the next kind of evolution of Photoshop. So last class we did basic photo editing. We did the layers adjustment, we did the channel mixer, um, we converted to black and white, those sorts of things. And today we're going to take it a step further and we're going to use something called blending modes. And this is the kind of topic that really takes practice on your end to really understand what it does. And I would even argue that in the long term, you won't see the, the true great results today. You're going to see them at the end of the semester when we're collaging in. Uh, you take your sketch up and you bring it into Photoshop and you work over the top of it. So it's, it's something for the future, but at the same time, we're at a point right now where it makes sense to introduce it as a topic. And so we'll, we'll cover that and we'll, we'll go through what a blending mode is, and then we'll do a bunch of practice today. And that's really what it's about. So, in terms of blending modes, I have to do a little bit of an introduction to them to talk through what they are. Um, but like I said, it takes practice and you need to actually physically do it to understand it a little bit better. Um, on, the, on the kind of most basic level, what a blending mode is, is it's kind of like taking a layer and making it semi-transparent. And so if we think about this in an analog sense, let's say we're, we're drawing something on the drafting tables in the other room. Not that anybody draws anymore, but let's say that we were. And you took a piece of trace, and you laid it over your drawing, and you drew on top of it. Okay, That layer of trace that's sitting on top of your physical drawing is altering the drawing below it to some extent. And so if it's altering it to some extent, we can mimic that in Photoshop. We could adjust an opacity slider and just say, hey, this layer is semi-transparent. On the other hand, if we kind of evolve it and control what that tracing paper is, we can control how it changes. So let's say that you drew on a piece of clear film. It would look different than on a piece of white trace. And that would look different than a piece of yellow trace. Photoshop can do something very similar in this world of blending modes. And it has to do with the mathematically how the layer is applied, the opacity on the layer is applied. Okay? So let's talk through this a little bit more. Okay? Our blending modes in Photoshop follow it fall into some very basic groups okay and the the groups are 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 kind of right here would be the normal that would be just standard opacity right semi transparent then we move into layers or blending modes that generally darken the image we have layers or blending modes that generally lighten the image Contrast down here is lightening the lights and darkening the darks, but leaving the middle the same. And then we have some specialty uh, pieces down here at the bottom. We won't use too much of these. We'll use a luminosity today just a little bit so you can see how that might affect uh, the image. The hard part about blending modes is the names don't really mean a lot. So if we look here for a second, uh, let's take the lighten section right there. Lighten, OK. It's going to lighten the image. Screen, color dodge, linear dodge, those don't mean much until you actually perform them and then you start to see what happens. They're just a designator for how mathematically Photoshop applies a given blending mode or a given layer. So there's a bunch of blending modes. We're going to use these. Multiply, screen, overlay, Later on in the semester, we'll use soft light. And today, I said we'll use luminosity a little bit. So I'm going to try my best to go through uh, kind of a graphic illustration of what a blending mode does and how it works. Okay, So in this, I have two different layers. I have a layer that is on top, which is highlighted by that red square. And below it, I have a blue layer, a solid blue layer. And you guys will actually get this file to practice with today. And I'll walk you through it live in Photoshop. But we'll talk about it first. Okay, So these are two layers. One is on top of the other. Obviously, around this, right? so we have the black square, the gray square, and the white square. Around all of that is transparent. Okay, and then I have a gradient here, so you can see how the how it how it corresponds to a variety of colors. Okay, so let's move forward. So we look at this. This is my base drawing. So if I was looking at it in Photoshop, this is exactly what I'm going to see: black, gray, white gradient on top of a solid blue layer. When I apply a blending mode, 
to the top layer. So it's only affecting the black, the gray, the white, and the, the gradient. The blue is just still blue. Okay? What happens here, okay, areas that are lighter, okay, and this is where it takes a little bit of, uh, of, of thinking. Okay? If we apply a multiply layer, areas that are lighter on the multiply layer become transparent. Areas that are darker on the multiply layer become darker. So in this case, the white is going to become entirely transparent. The gray is going to become semi-transparent. And the black is going to become black. So let's look at it when it happens. So we apply the multiply layer. And we get completely transparent where it's white. We get semi-transparent. You can see some of the blue coming through in that gray. And we get black. Okay. Let's try the screen layer instead. Okay. And as we apply that screen layer, areas that are darker on the screen layer become transparent. So this is the exact opposite of what just happened. Okay. So as I go forward, there we go. And it's not, it's not true black. It was a really dark gray. I made a mistake. Okay. So we see that there. But that. In the red, what was that dark becomes completely transparent. What was the middle becomes a little bit lighter, and the white becomes completely. So let's look at it as an overlay. So the overlay, so we did the darken, we did the lighten, and now we're in the overlay mode. The overlay is darken, or the, the dark becomes transparent, the light becomes transparent, and, or excuse me, the middle becomes transparent, the dark becomes darker, the light becomes lighter. Sometimes you get tongue-tied, right? So there we go. So the dark becomes darker, the light becomes lighter, and the middle is the one that drops out in transparency. So it's lightening the lights and darkening the darks. OK, so I'm going to stop here. We're going to move over into the actual demonstration. Like I said, the, the talk was short because you need practice to really understand. Uh, because no matter how many times I try to verbally describe it, it makes way more sense once we move over. So while I'm switching computers and the recording over, I want you to go on the course website. I want you to go to today's exercise 105. And under the first step of 105, there's a sample file, a Photoshop file that I want you to download. OK, so you guys download that file. And then um, I'll switch over the recordings, and then we'll go through that particular file. OK, so like I said, you're going to go to exercise 105, today's exercise. And under this first step, we're going to download the Photoshop blending modes.psd file. This is the sample that we're going to start working with. And you guys are just going to follow me along. We don't need to do any actual saving related to this. But this will help illustrate some of the things that happen. So I already have it down. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Photoshop. And I'm going to go to File, and then Open. And I'm going to open up this file. It's exactly the same as the file that I showed in illustration purposes, so that you can see what, this happen what happens and, and how we're going to apply it. So there are four layers. right? We're going to ignore for right now layer 3 and layer 2. We have just layer 1 and the background layer. If I were to turn off layer 1, the background layer is that solid blue. If we look at layer 1, we see that it's just the black, the gray, and the white with the gradient. So that's the exact same layer setup that I just illustrated um, online. What we're going to do is we're going to take layer 1 and we're going to apply a blending mode to it. And applying a blending mode is very, very easy. We just need to select the layer that we want to apply the blending mode to, in this case, layer 1. And then we're going to come up in the Layers palette to a little drop down that says Normal. And if we click on that Normal palette, we see here's the list of the blending modes that I showed you earlier. We have the Normal blending modes. We have the Darken blending modes. We have the Lightning blending modes. We have the Darken the Darks and Lighten the Lights blending modes. And then we have some of the specialty ones at the bottom. So we're going to start first with the Multiply blending mode. So when I select Multiply, you see that the light, let me switch tools here, the white becomes entirely transparent. The medium gray makes the blue darker. 
and the black makes the blue almost black or very dark. On the other hand, if we take layer one and we change the blending mode to screen, the opposite happens. So the area that was really dark becomes transparent. The area in the middle makes the blue lighter. And the areas that was white makes the blue really light or white in this case. If we move down further, remember these are the darkens, these are the lightens. We move into this category, we're going to use overlay. And when we use overlay, it's going to do um, basically the darks, or excuse me, the dark is going to become darker, the light is going to become lighter, and the middle is what's going to become transparent. So I'm going to switch to overlay, and there it is. The middle becomes transparent, the dark becomes darker, the light becomes lighter. OK, so now I've done those, and we've kind of talked through the basic concept here. But why are these particularly valuable? Let's turn off layer 1, and let's turn on layer 2. So if I turn on layer 2, this is a drawing that came out of SketchUp. It kind of looks like a SketchUp drawing, maybe a little bit. It's just a JPEG. It has a white background, and it has black lines on it. We could go in, and we could erase this white background to leave us with just the black lines and have those black lines show up on a background, effectively cutting it out. Or we could apply a blending mode to this image. And this is where it starts to become powerful. And you'll see why this is valuable down the road. We could say, OK, let's move to layer 2 so it's selected. And let's apply the multiply blending mode. And when we do that, the white goes away. And the black lines become nice and dark on top of our blue background. So we've essentially made the line drawing that came out of SketchUp that has a white background have a transparent background with just the line drawing. So it really saves in this, this output process um, from SketchUp. If, however, we switched and went to, say, the lighten or the screen, I'll use screen, okay? in this case, the lines have become blue, but the white remains solid. Kind of like an old, old school blue line drawing. If we switched into the overlay mode, we get kind of a combination of the two. We get blue lines and we get a lighter blue backdrop. Not that common to use that in this context. Let's switch and look at layer three. So layer three is the opposite of layer one or layer two in that the lines are white and the background is black. So in this context, if we were to go to our first option, which was the multiply blending mode, it would become, and it's really hard for you guys to see on the, on the screen, but when you do it, you'll see that the lines are blue and the background stays black. Not that valuable at this point. Let's try instead to go down to the next one, which is screen. And when we do that, the white of the lines shows nice and, and um, strong, and the blue, right? or essentially the black becomes transparent and we see just the blue. So it's just the opposite of the white on black. So I wanted to walk through these as kind of a basic illustration of how they apply. And now we're going to take this and apply it to some actual images to see what can this do from a photography sense. You can obviously see where we're going with this down the road in terms of architectural drawings and, and that sort of thing. But for right now, we're, we're obviously in the photography section, so it makes sense to talk through how this might apply to a photograph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with some older photographs. And I think that they're easiest to, to kind of illustrate what's happening here. And to find some old photographs, I'm going to do a Creative Commons image search. So if I type search.creativecommons.org, what this does is uh, Creative Commons is a way of licensing images. So let's say you were a photographer, you took a picture, you posted it on Flickr. You can choose to let people use your work to borrow the picture. Or you can choose to say, no, I have copyright to this. Nobody can use it. And when you do a, a Google image search, for example, you may get a mix of copywritten images and non-copywritten images. And if you were really trying to be legally correct, you would have to go through and see what is this person, how, how's the person who photographed it actually licensing the image, and do I have permission to use it? And when we do a Creative Commons search, 
using this rather than Google Images, it will only search for things that people have said, yeah, you can go ahead and borrow it. Okay, so it's a legal way of, of finding images to use. So I like to encourage you to do that if possible. So I'm going to go ahead and, and search for old photograph. Oops. And I, sorry, I want to pick Flickr as my search tool. And I'm looking for an image that's kind of faded. Something like this would work fine. An image like this, this old farm image, it's already really nice. It has high contrast and, and what have you. So that one's not the best one to choose. So something like this is probably a very good one to choose. It's kind of an old scan. So I'm going to take this image. Down in the right corner here, there's an arrow with a line on it. It'll say download this photo. I'm going to go ahead and download this photo in its original size. And Flickr has these really nasty long names to the images. So there it is. Let me go ahead and copy it. And I'm going to put it into today's folder. So let me go over to my flash drive here under live demonstrations. And we're going to, well, it, yours it won't be live demonstrations. For me it is. And let me create a new folder really quick to put this in. And we'll call this spring of 2017. And let me go ahead and paste this image there. OK, so now I'm going to go ahead and open this up in Photoshop. And I can right click on the image and say open with Photoshop. And there it is in Photoshop. So now I want to work with this image to try to make it better. And so we're going to use blending modes to do this. So if I look at the layer palette here, I have one image, and it's currently on the background layer. Notice that the background layer here is italicized, and it also has a lock icon next to it. Okay, that means I can't do anything. I can't perform any edits on this particular image. So in order to, to perform edits on it, I'm going to right click on the, where it says background. And when I do that, the first option here is Layer from Background. So when I pick Layer from Background, it's going to ask me to name the layer. Layer 0 is fine. I'll say OK. And it no longer has the lock icon. It no longer says Background italicized. And I can actually work with this layer. So thus far, when we worked in Photoshop, we did the adjustment layers. And you didn't have to unlock the layer itself. Now we're going to get into the habit of unlocking the layer. Furthermore, in order to apply a blending mode, I need something or a layer to apply the blending mode on. So I need more than just layer 0 for this to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on layer 0, and I'm going to say duplicate layer. And in this case, let's call it layer 1 for clarity. And I'll say OK. So now I have two layers, layer 0 and layer 1, that are both exactly the same. They both show the same black and white picture. But on layer 1, I'm going to apply a blending mode. So with layer 1 selected, I'm going to go ahead and come here. And I'll start with the first blending mode, which is Multiply. So let's go ahead and click on Multiply. And we see that immediately the photo changes pretty dramatically. So we have it without. The darks are kind of light gray-ish. And when I turn it on, we suddenly have much darker darks, but we haven't changed anything in the light areas of the picture. Right? Those light areas are still saying light. So we're just darkening the shadows. Now, this may or may not be too strong to your eye. And you have to, to develop a taste for how much of these adjustments need to be applied to make the image look good. If I wanted to adjust how much was applied, I can take the layer here and adjust right next to where we switched it to multiply. I can adjust the opacity value down, and that will control how much of the multiply is actually being applied. So maybe this is a bit strong. Maybe I want something a little bit less at maybe 80%, something like that. So as part of today's exercise, we're going to be creating lots and lots of images okay, that you'll end up posting. So the first one here, this is a multiply. So I'll go to File. I'll go to Save for Web, 
And it's better to do this along the way rather than going back and trying to do it, because we're going to create lots of these images. So the first one here, I'll again adjust the width here to 1,000. And I'll go ahead and click on Save. And I'm going to add, this is BW woman. And we'll say this is multiply. And I'll go ahead and click on Save. While I'm here, let me turn off layer one. And I'm going to save the original. So I'll go to File, Save for Web. Again, we'll change the width to 1,000. I'll click Save. And this was the original. And I'll click Save. So layer 1 is my multiply layer. Let me go ahead and double click it. And I'm going to rename it to be multiply. So we get used to that keeping organized, keeping our layers organized, et cetera. So instead of multiply, let's say we want to do one of the lightning layers. So let me take layer 0 again. I'm going to right click on it. And I'm going to say duplicate layer. And this is going to be screen. And I'll go ahead and say OK. And so now I have a multiply layer, but it's off. And I have a screen layer that's on. Let me change the blending mode on the screen layer to be screen. And when I do that, it lightens up the lighter areas of the image. And in all honesty, this didn't help the image much. It doesn't look particularly good. Okay? But part of learning the process is practicing on the image and seeing what happens. So in this case, I'm not super satisfied with the results. Uh, maybe we'll drop the opacity down of the layer just a little bit so it's not quite so bright. And now I have the screen. Let me go ahead and do a file, save for web, of the screen version. So again, this is 1,000. And I'll click Save. And this is screen. And I'll go ahead and click Save. So I have multiply. I have screen. Let's turn off screen. And let's apply the third option, which is overlay. So I'll right click on layer 0 again. I'm going to select duplicate layer. And we'll call this overlay. And I'll say OK. There's overlay. And I'm going to change my blending mode right here from normal to overlay. And so what this one does is it lightens the lights and darkens the darks. So if we compare overlay to multiply, for example, multiply does a great job with the shadows and certainly enhances the image. But if we look at overlay, right, not only are we getting darker in the shadows, but we're getting a little bit of brighter contrast on the image itself. So we're getting kind of the best of both worlds in this context. Darker darks, lighter lights. Again, it may be a little strong. So I can tone this down just a little bit, maybe 80%, something like that. And now I get the overlay blending mode. So I'll go to File, Save for Web again. And I'll go ahead and click on, let me change the size here to 1,000. I'll click on Save. And this is overlay. And I'll go ahead and click on Save. When you look at the handout today for 105, we went, we've gone through now part two, part three, and part four. On part two, three, and four, I'm saying you need to post two images total. In the context of me doing it, I have one original, and then I've done one screen, one multiply, and one overlay. So there's, there's just four images as opposed to six, because I only, I'm using the same image for each one. That's perfectly fine. So I have that. The next thing that we're going to do is a few of the other strategies. And I told you we'd try luminosity out today. And at this point, it's, not, it's no longer about the black and white image. We're going to use a, an actual color image. And when I apply the luminosity, I'd like to do it to something that has a lot of color in it already. So let's try, uh, let me see here. Let me try this image, which is an image of a sunset. Let me open that one in Photoshop. There it is. And I'm going to show you what luminosity does. And luminosity is good for things with like reds or blues or deep saturation colors. So sunsets would be good, um, you know, dinner parties, holiday dinner parties, something like that. 
with a lot of reds and heavy saturation. So let's go ahead and go through the luminosity um, adjustment layer. So once again, when I first open the image, I have the layer. It's called the background layer, and it's locked, which means I can't edit it. So I'm going to right click on the background layer and say layer from background, which converts the background layer into layer 0. I'll go ahead and say OK. So now it's an editable, workable layer. OK, so now I need to duplicate this layer. Let me just make sure I do this correctly. Oh, never mind. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do a curves adjustment layer to it. So I have layer 0. I'm going to go up to my layer menu. I'm going to go to new adjustment layer, and I'm going to go to curves. So we'll go ahead and say OK. Now on this, I'm going to do a typical S curve. So I'm going to peg a point right here in the center, like that. Then I'm going to lift by clicking and dragging this part of the curve up just a bit. And I'll pull this part of the curve down just a little bit more. That was too much. Yeah, about like that. So when I say in part five, a traditional S curve, this is what I'm talking about. So it's shaped a little bit like an S. I know it's not a real S, but you guys get that it looks kind of like an S. Okay, So that is a traditional S curve like that. And now I'm going to take that S curve and I'm going to apply the luminosity adjustment layer to it. Perfect. And so now if we turn it on and turn it off, you can see that it's tweaked the colors just a little bit and it's tweaked how we're seeing that. It makes the, um, the sunset feel a little bit more real because of how it punches the colors. It's not just an oversaturated image. This one, if we look, and it's hard for the projector is not as good as, as when you're looking at it. But if we look at the skyline here, a lot of the colors are just becoming oversaturated. And when we turn on that luminosity adjustment, it lightens up a little bit of the lighter colors and makes it feel a little bit more like a true sunset. So again, it's subtle. Let me do it with another image, just for the practice of it. Let's see if I can find another image. Try this one. OK, so we have one with with the big blue sky, and we'll see how this luminosity adjusts for this one. So I'll go up to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Curves, and I'll say OK. And I'll peg the center, just like I did last time. And then I'll pull up the upper curve, and I'll pull down the lower curve to give myself that traditional S curve. This needs to go a little higher. There, like that. Once I have this, I'll apply the luminosity adjustment to it. And we can see what the original was, and we can see the contrast. You can see that it's changing the sky a little bit. It's harder for you guys to see. It washes out right in here on the, on the projector. But when you look at it on the computer, it's, it's much better in here. Such is life. So just another strategy on this luminosity adjustment. Worth a try for you to play around with it. So let me go ahead and save. I'll save this first one. I'm going to go to File, Save for Web. And I'll make sure I cut the image size down to 1,000. And I'll click Save. And in this case, let's rename this to be something like Sunset Luminosity. And I'll click Save. And then I need the Sunset without the Luminosity. I'll go to File, Save for Web. Again, 1,000. Save, Sunset, this would be Sunset Original. So whenever I switch images, I want to make sure that I have the original and the one that I've adjusted. So there's Original, and I'll click Save. So sometimes you want to play around and create some more realism to an image. Or then this, this happens not so much in the world of photography, but definitely in the, in the world of, of architectural design or design in general, uh, is that we want to take something that is rendered out or something that is too perfect and add some natural dirt to it. And especially in the, in the world of renderings, 
Um, when we render in V-Ray, everything is perfect. There's no dirt on anything. And in reality, things always have some dirt on them. And uh, actually, I'll tell you a side story. So you guys have seen the Toy Story movies, right? Okay. As part of the Pixar team that was doing the renderings, obviously those are computer animated movies. But as part of the rendering team, there was a sub team that was assigned to just dirt. Okay, they didn't do the animations, but in the renderings, they had to add things like dirt to make things feel real, to make things feel like they were dirty, because the world is dirty. Okay, so it's kind of interesting to think about this as a concept as part of computer rendering. Computers are too perfect, so we need to find a way to resolve that. So this is an introduction to that. We won't take it too far. But what we're going to do is we're going to use the same blending modes to apply something called a grunge texture. So I'm going to go back to my Creative Commons search. So search.creativecommons.org. And once again, I'm searching in Flickr. I'm going to type here grunge texture. And I'll hit Enter. And what a grunge texture is, is it's something that's kind of dirty. It's a concrete wall. It's a crinkled piece of paper. Right? Something like this. This is a good one. Right? Just little bits of dirt. And so as you go through this, you can find something that looks appealing to you. It could be something subtle, like this. Right? There's just a little crease there, a little bit of staining on it. It could be something far more graphic and stronger, maybe something like this. Right? A little piece of brown canvas. Once I've found a few of these, I'm going to go ahead and download them in their original size. So here's my first one. Let me go ahead and show in folder. Oops. There it is. Let me copy this. And I actually have in my flash drive, I have a folder called grunge textures that I put these in because I tend to use them over and over again. But for today, I'll put it in my, my folder. So let's paste that one in. Let me use this subtle one, too. Go ahead and download this one as well. Show in folder. There it is. Let me copy it. And we'll paste it here as well. So for your purposes, you can pick any image. I'll use the one with the luminosity on it for right now, but you could pick a different image if you want. And I'm going to bring in that grunge texture. So I'll come up to the menu at the top, and I'll go to File, and then Place. And I'm going to browse for my grunge texture. I'll use the strong one first so that it's a little bit more obvious. When I'm done and I've found it, I'll click on the Place button. And I now see grunge texture. So let me zoom out a little bit. I'll press Control minus to zoom out. And I'm going to enlarge this particular image. And you can see that when I drag this image, I push it down the, uh, the, the ratio of the sides. If, however, I hold down the Shift key on the keyboard, it will stay in proportion as I make it bigger. So we'll leave it in proportion. I'll make it bigger than my image. And when I'm done enlarging it, I'll click on the little confirm check mark. There, I've committed to it. So I have this great texture, but I'm not seeing my original image. So we're going to use our blending modes to apply this texture to my original image. So let's go through and try a few. We'll start with multiply. So if I specify multiply as my blending mode, we see through, and we see an awful lot of the, the texture. Right? It's kind of dark. In that case, perhaps we need to adjust the opacity so that more of the image shows through. Still not quite the look I was going for. So let's change. And instead of multiply, let's try screen. So again here, I get the texture OK, but it's really washed out. And so once again, maybe I'd try the opacity, toning that down. Eh, it's OK. It's better than the, the multiply. Let's try overlay. Okay, So an overlay gives me kind of the best of both worlds. And again, I may need to adjust this down. It's a little strong in the beginning. So I'll adjust it down. 
And I have just a subtle texture behind this. And maybe I, I've exaggerated a bit for illustration purposes of what it can do. We can play around with some of the other ones. Certainly, we went through multiply screen. You could try some of these other options. You could try soft light, for example, which lessens the effect a bit. And once I'm, I'm done with this, I'd go ahead and go to file save for web. Let's try a different one, though. File and play. And let me try that more subtle image. Make this a little bit larger. There. And there. Remember, I'm holding down shift as I do this. And then let me commit. And we'll change this blending mode to overlay. Right? Yeah, I don't like it. Let's try lighten or screen. Wow, too much. Drop that opacity down. Go back to overlay. And there you go. So in this case, there's a little bit in there, and it's probably not enough. We could try multiply. Increase this a little bit. There we go. In this case, the multiply shows through a little bit better. And we get just a little bit of that crease in there. So I want you to, to play around with this idea of adding a grunge texture to your image. You can get even more creative depending on what, sh what you find in your grunge textures. So sometimes you want to search for, say, something like this with the